Hello, Texas. This is Steve, and welcome to episode three of the podcast. I'm on my way to Waco to Tim and Melissa Murphy's house. Uh, that's where we decided to record the next episode, try out some new equipment, and see what happens. And on the way, I decided to stop and pick up a little something for them. Um, surprise both of them. Let's see how it goes. What's up? Hey, buddy. How are you doing? I'm good. Stoked that we're finally going to do this. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, Ridgewood. I, I lifeguarded here all through high school. Oh, what's up? <laughs> you a present what's up <laughs> my brother what is up man oh my god man how are you doing oh, great oh my god i ain't seen you in forever oh, melissa's so melissa's gonna lose it <laughs> oh my god yeah i bet it's been almost a year probably uh, no, or longer years. how are you how man, you I'm been great. Great. are you married yet how many no, kids just you got engaged. just engaged just engaged man, man yeah. congratulations yeah. my thank god you, you look you. great uh, i brought i brought what's the interview up? to the house <laughs> oh my god! Oh, Thank you! Oh my god! You look so good! Look at this! Oh my god! I was gonna stop and pick up some beer, and Bo was there, so I just picked him up instead. So. Yeah, I'm way cheaper. Let's <laughs> fill Hello, Texas. Hello, Texas. <laughs> take two. Yeah, take two. Oh, wait, 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 everything and and I'm like, wait a minute, why is it not blinking at me? So, welcome to episode three of Hello Texas podcast. We're in Waco with uh, Tim Mur at Tim and Melissa Murphy's house. And, and uh, I'm sorry, I, just, I, I gotta say this because I'll, I'll be self conscious if I don't. We we are buying a house. Sort of. We were buying a house, and then we backed out the contract. The house was trash. Anyway, so. But we will be now. Yeah, yeah. Well, now it's going to yeah. be spoken. So you're, you're kind of you're, you'll see some of our stuff, and and you know we're just trashy people, and you know we, just, oh, we barely live here. So, but man, well, you're here. Yeah, and 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 one of the surprises was I picked up our, our friend Bo Bofing along the way. I just wanted and beer. I said, bring beer. We'll cook some wings. Well, it's only a couple letters off. You know, I could see where it would get <laughs> like auto correct. There, yeah, there's that's probably that's what. It, let me go back and look. <laughs> so no so big deal. Take two. We started recording a little early before I hit the right button, and now we have to backtrack a little Bo bit. Bo Bobby's in my diner. Bo, Bobby's here. <laughs> Bo, welcome. Are we already asked these questions, but let's yeah. ask them again. Yeah. How are you? How's I'm doing uh, great, man. I'm doing great. Congratulations. Happy to be here. Congratulations on the uh, engagement. Thank you, guys. <laughs> How did that work out? We've already been on through this. Let's do it again. Um, yeah, we uh, had gone up to Connecticut for a private show, and um, my lady, Whitney, flew out with me, and we got a rental car and went, the two of us, up to Canada for almost a week and just, you know, enjoyed exploring and eating and doing all that fun stuff in a new city. And, uh, and then it was New Year's Eve, and it was snowing, and we went out to the bars and had a good time. Why and then, Canada? Man, honestly, we had been just kind of scheming up a trip, the two of us, N not even related to the engagement, because she didn't know that I was proposing. So it was just kind of, we were just talking about, let's go some, somewhere. You know, we had Something some, completely different. Yeah, we had some time off, off the trail. and it was like, hey, let's, let's do something. And then this last minute private show got added. And we hadn't figured out a plan yet. And it was like, well, heck, we're already going to be all the way across the country. And so, like, I'm getting a, a paid flight over there. So that kind of cuts the cost down. So yeah. let's just try to find a way to, to exploit that into us having some time. And we've done New York before. And there's not, you know, we, we drove. So it's cool because we got to go through Vermont and Connecticut and all that stuff and kind of see some new places. But, yeah, it just kind of turned out where I was like, hey, we've never been to Canada and it's not that far. It was only like a five-hour drive. And y'all did that during so, New Year's. Mm -hmm, yeah. His birthday. Yeah, birthday and New Year's and, and everything. Birthday. And so it was awesome. And apparently, we didn't even know this, but it, it's a great time, that time of year, to go to that area because it's so snowy. There's not a ton of tourism. Yeah. So we got to kind of do whatever we wanted. I mean, there was no lines. There was no 
you could, if you saw a really nice restaurant, you didn't have to worry about, oh crap, I didn't make reservations six months ago. Like you just walked in and it was. I hope Melissa's know. not listening. <laughs> yeah. How was, how was uh, Niagara Falls? I haven't been there since I was a kid. The, I know you went there the, the day after. Yeah. The day after we did the proposal, um, the falls were awesome. The city itself was a little tourist trappy for me. Um, I've heard that. I presume she said yes. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I got lucky. So I, she knows that y'all are engaged. There's yeah. no big surprises no, there. I let her in on it this time. So All right, all right, all right. That's yeah, good. she's uh, she's on board. And, and it was – man, I'll tell you, I, I, I've told the story to a couple people because I've had a few friends. My, one of my good buddies, David Weezy, just got engaged too. He's Reckless Kelly's merch guy. Yeah. And we hang out, and it, we were kind of going through this process of getting the rings and, you know, trying to figure out how we're going to do it together. And he – proposed maybe a month after me and we had talked and it was like there's there was that feeling the day that it happened and then like watching Whitney dance around and look at her hand and spin around and just like seeing this joy that feeling if I could bottle that up and drink that every day or you know bottle that up and experience that every day I would and seeing people that are like at the start of that process or like, you know, knowing him and knowing that he was about to be on that process. It was like, it's so exciting for them knowing like you're about to have like the best day of your life. Like yeah. it's so much so fun. You can see the movie playing. Yeah. I, like already. I'm like, I know what's about to happen and you're going to, you're going to love it. And it's going to so, be great. Yeah. So it's, yeah, there is, there's something really special yeah, about that. I know. I especially you Melissa, know, she's like, when you work, <laughs> when you work for something and you know, it, it's, it's a big financial decision big purchase and it's like you save up for that you work for that and then you see that and you you acquire it first and you're looking at it you're like wow that's perfect that's exactly what i wanted and then you have to keep it a secret well at least right. in my case i did and that's long, hard it's a big financial uh thing to keep yeah a secret. i kept the secret like i got it in like maybe early october so right. like two or three months and like that's the thing we're playing this trip right and so it's like hey you know well let's we'll get this car and we'll grab this airbnb and then it's like hey well we'll just split it up go ahead and Venmo me whenever you're ready and i'm like look at my bank account like oh crap like <laughs> how do i say give me a month with i mean like she knows i should have that amount of money but now i'm over here like i can't tell her i don't have money because i just, the reason i don't have money is that i made a big purchase without telling her why don't you so, have all the yeah. money what yeah. do you Bo. spend the money on, Bo? Yes. Where have you been, Bo? <laughs> exactly. Mr. Rockstar on the road. Yeah. Who yeah. are you buying jewelry for? Well, and so I, I've, I've, I've laughed about this story, and I've actually I told her this too, but uh, Brett Brock, he was Sam's sound guy for a while, and he's with John Wolf now. I was with him the day I bought the ring, and I've been, I've been camping on this ring for a while, and I was waiting to find out some sizing stuff, and I was just real nervous about it, and it was the ring, though. I could tell. I knew it. And so I found out that day that I was with him that the size was exactly right because it was just a one-off. I got off Etsy from a, a person in California. And um, as soon as I found out the size was right, I was like, you know what? I'm doing this. This is the one. I've known it from the get-go. I'm not waiting anymore. And so I did it. And him and I were sitting there and we had a couple glasses of whiskey afterwards. And then we hung out all day. And then later I was going home and she was like, you're, every time you hang out with Brad, you always end up staying there way longer than you say, you know, all this stuff. And I'm sitting there laughing. I'm like, man, if she only knew how much of the day was about like her and like, she, you know, I can't say like, girl, give me a break. I promise. Like I just spent all day, you know, focusing on you or thinking about you. But then like, and you're like, yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. You know, like, you know what I mean? It's so no, funny. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah. Like, you're like, if you only mind, knew what was going on. Get off of my back. Yeah. It's been about you all day. But yeah. you can't do that. No, then you rub, you rub it in her face when she finds out. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but then you, I mean, after she finds out, you, you can kind of. It was so satisfying it. to, because then she's like, well, who all knew? And, and pretty much everybody knew. And she's very observant and very good at like you know busting things like that and so i started telling all these people like oh, yeah your parents knew obviously like talk to your dad and your sister and my whole family and then you know you're at that christmas party where everyone around you knew and she's like oh my gosh how'd you got how'd y'all keep it a secret for me and it's just like so funny to like like it's a good feeling man it's awesome oh cool well congratulations Thank it's you. really cool we're we, we i was happy for you when i saw it on there like yeah. oh dude i didn't know it was i didn't know it's coming yeah, so it's, sh oh, it's crazy i didn't know exactly that i was gonna do it then either it was kind of like i had it with me at all times starting at that moment and then it was like whenever things happen right i'm gonna do it and hope for the best and that was a pretty perfect moment i don't think i could have scripted or asked for anything to be more romantic so for those of you that don't know <laughs> bo Bolfing is with uh, sam riggs is it sam yeah. riggs and the night people still i don't think i think, I think it's just, it's sam, just riggs. sam riggs, sam riggs. No, i'm not 100 sure it used to be the 
that was and, night ha- no I night, people, night people yeah. night people yeah night howlers <laughs> is shay yeah shay so how long have you been with uh man yeah Sam? Uh, almost three years this it'll be three years this summer that's, that's crazy uh, and and we met uh back six, when you were playing with ago, dolphin yeah. domino six or seven years ago yeah at Shep's and we're standing next to each other. We have a mutual friend named Jordan Wiltfong in Oklahoma. And she texted me and said, Hey, make sure you say hi to my friend, Bo. She texted Bo. Hey, make sure you say hi to my friend, Steve. At the same time, we happen to be standing next to each other and yeah, and looked like, up yeah. and been friends ever since. Um, it took, it took y'all two or three times uh, coming to, to Shep's and I was hooked the first time with, with that band. Yeah. You and yeah, that Chase. Was a, that was a lot of fun. That was a killer band. That was that was one of my favorite uh bands. Yeah. Uh you and Chase and Sam Mode. Oh Mo yeah, yeah. Wow, I'm looking Mode out. Who? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't Mike know. Michael Mode. Uh yeah. you know and I, I think Chase y'all Francis. were I think y'all were probably you and and mode were probably the first artist uh band members that that i can think of that that i would say confidently that i was friends with that, Man, that i and, knew and i was trying to think too when did we met at lone star jam or was it y'all so i actually had shot you at, at lone, lone star, star jam, jam unknowing yeah ha- had no clue um we uh we snuck sort of connived our way into getting cameras into lone star jam and um shot you and a whole bunch of people and and you, maybe your dad, anyway, had, 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 you know, seen the pictures and started yeah. sharing them. And I, and I remember your dad going, that's my boy right there. That's my son. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, cool. You know, he, he's like a rock star. Then I find out, you know, it was a week or two later, I, I, you had talked about him. I think you had, y'all had come to the backyard yeah, or something. I think so, yeah. And uh, you had said, hey, you need to say hi to the, the lead guitarist there, uh, Bo Boffy. I said, sure, whatever. And because um, I, I don't get starstruck very often, it, it rarely, and then ends up you all end up being just these super yeah. incredibly nice guys. It was probably the first time that I realized that I mean, anybody that could get on stage with a mic or a guitar or a drum kit and and perform in front of people is is a hero of mine. I mean, just I think it's the I, I get yeah. up there to introduce Dalton Domino to fifty people and I'm shaking like a leaf. So for y'all to do that. So it was the first time that I talked to somebody that I'm like, oh, this guy's just a normal dude. He's not a, you're a rock God too, but. Well, I mean, yeah, they sort of, y'all kind of set the bar for my expectation for everybody I met from that point on, just because you were real yeah. and you were nice and just genuine. And, and I kind of expected everybody else to, to sort of follow suit. And I have since found out everybody's not. But, but I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's just really, really cool knowing, uh, knowing that. And that was a that was a special band, man. I was we me, I still hang out with Chase Francis and Slam a lot, and uh, we joke all the time. One day we're gonna corner Dalton and make him do like a reunion show or something and get like the original group back together and, and do some stuff. Just because, do some fun stuff. Yeah, because I mean that band for what it was, there was so much creative. Then there was no one saying, "Hey, you got to play this, or you got to play that, or you need to do yeah. this." It was all pretty much self-policed, which is insane in the music world. And to, to be have, successful yeah, as y'all have, were yeah, to at have any it. kind of success, and have it basically be like, well, whatever the drummer Chase wanted to play that night, he literally did. And then same thing for all of us. And I mean, as it got a little further along, and there was a little more recorded music, you kind of had to stick sort of to the to the blueprint. Had to be more but of a consistency. Then, if the crowd was hot and it was a fun night and you, I could play a guitar solo until my fingers fell off and no one would be like, you're fired. You know what I mean? Like, right. well, yeah. And, no, and we, we've watched that happen. We just kind of, we've watched Dalton just kind of play and just yeah. be enthralled with, yeah. with you guys. Yeah. Same thing with mode. And, and it I'm, was just energetic. I've always see. been kind of uh, admired that he didn't have a, he had a set list, but he never played the set yeah. list. Yeah, that y'all sure. just y'all just did what was naturally in the next. And song honestly, play. that is terrifying as a band member. <laughs> I bet. Uh, and I mean, oh my gosh, because when you think about it, in my world, on my side of the stage, uh, I don't usually start the songs. It's usually drum and bass. Yeah. So naturally, as the singer who is making the set list up as you go, you turn to the rhythm section and you say, "Hey, this is the song that's coming next." Yeah. Well, they're gonna sit there and go one, two, three, and then it's like I'm over there like. Hey, hey, what what song is this? Or like, I'm having to listen to how the the drums are starting the song, 
to get my and hope he's playing it the same way. Yeah, he's absolutely. Been, because again, and then that if, whole if it was something style. that required a tuning change or a certain pedal effect, now I have got like that much time to process. Okay, well, it's this song. <laughs> Turn that effect on, and now I got to like try to. How catch has that up. made you a better? Oh, it definitely made me a better now. musician, and it definitely made me way older, way faster, and was something that I would have told you a couple of years ago was a, a big reason why I was looking forward to something like a Sam where there was way more structure and there was way more consistency and there was no like panic attack guest mode. What did, song is coming? Did next. that have to do with your transition to Sam? Yeah. I, I mean, I looked at it in this like learning process where I wanted to absorb and, and get experience in every capacity. Mm -hmm. And I felt I had put in my years of learning that style. And now I was ready for like, okay, well, because honestly no one had ever handed me a CD before. I've been like, learn that. I never had to do that. I well, never had to learn. You said parts. you had the uncle that kind of just threw you into the fire. Right. And said I'd never pick been it up. Like people knew if you got me, you got a very like emotive and expressive guitar player. But I was never the guy that was going to learn your material note for note. And I'm probably still not that guy. But there's a ton of there's a ton of great guitar players that can go out there and you can play the CD one time and they'll sit there and they'll just regurgitate those notes back like they played it the first time. Yeah. And that's so impressive to me. And I've never had to do that. And I was like if you're really going to make this in a, as a profession and as you start getting into these bands that are, you know, really successful and the touring machine bands, that's just how it is. I mean, even with Sam, we've, we've got some stuff coming up where like literally last week he shot us two or three songs and then we ran them at soundcheck last week. So within four days we were playing three songs and it was like, they have to be note for note and they have to be, the thing because that's how we don't learn them together you learn them individually and you come together and so, you so just, it's got to all fall in place yeah you got to know those and, parts and the and consistency absolutely has and so be there. that was like a huge motivator for me because i'm like man looking forward to this like if i'm going to do this at any long-term situation and like if i'm going to try to have a family and be married and all these things and contribute financially i've got to be able to play the gigs that pay and those are the Absolutely. ones that you have to be able to be a professional and, you know, sit down in there and learn that stuff. And so that was a big motivator. It was like, you know, I felt like this was a time where it was like I needed to kind of prove to myself, hey, I can I can hold it down with the, the professionals. And I'm not just like out here having fun. I, you know, I'm not playing for beer, you know, beer money anymore. I'm not doing yeah. it for the bar tab like this. Right. Is a, like if I'm going to do this for real, it's it's go time. And so uh, so I did. And there's there's a lot of a lot of parts of like why that transition happened. And honestly, I tell people all the time, you know, three, four years of doing something without any significant major changes, both people are, you know, both parts of that relationship start getting a little stagnant. You start, you start getting kind of going through the motions where like, Hey, I know how to play right. this. I know how to play this. And you just kind of start, you know, faking your way through it. And then same thing, they kind of don't expect as much. Like there's not that tension of like, I have to perform my job or I'm going to get in trouble because you're like, you're complacent. You're like, yeah, I'm not going anywhere. There's always, you yeah. should be always kind of a forward progression. Yeah, you got to be changed. You got to get better. Yeah. And, and, so, and it's not that you're not, but just, there's yeah. nothing driving you because 100%. the expectation is, Hey, just, just go have a good time and yeah. Do your, so how fun is it playing with Sam Span? It's awesome, man. It's, it's a, uh, it is a super energetic show and it is the most positive environment musically and professionally i've ever been in um and like i said i still hang out and chase and slam those guys those guys are my best friends but in on the in the road life side of things this environment i'm in right now is like it's just you like you no one is ever cranky or or sad you know what i mean like it's just you wake up every day and you're like holy cow you had to play some music and like I, that has just been so uh and i've heard i've, heard, I've heard sam's got a um a level of excellence yeah, yeah. that he will drive for for sure nonstop. And he's extreme in everything he does. And, and so. it's not even the cool thing there. And again, another part of like why I was interested in this gig, it's not even just in the music. I could sit there and play a, a 99 or a hundred percent show where I played everything exact. Every note I was trying to play on the fretboard, I hit and Sam could walk off and in his mind be like, man, I think Bo could have done a little better tonight. And that comes from the energy and, and the show as a whole picture. So like, there's no one person has, is the star yeah, in this. Everybody he, he, contributes he tr to the like, whole. He truly looks at it as like the, that full immersive experience. And so the music, as much as, as important as it is, he still wants that, that engagement in the crowd and, and moving around and, you know, doing things on stage. And you know, that's, that is really cool because again, that's, that's part of being a professional and that's part of putting on the it's, show. It's why you're such a good fit with, with yeah, Sam's band. You I, and, I truly and, think so. Yeah. And Anthony, the, 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 bass player, the yeah. bass player there, uh, AD. Yeah. 
before you were with the band, I remember, man, he just had the yeah. best time. And then when you joined, I'm like, yeah, oh my God, y'all having just the best time. It, it feels like uh, a little bit of like this like club, you know, it, it, like not in the inclusive sense, but like you really kind of just feel like you're running around with your friends. Like we always joke. It's like, yeah, how, how can this job suck? It's like getting to take a road trip with your best friends and someone's paying you money to do it. You right. know what I mean? Like it's insane. You're literally just like hanging out there and like traveling around and, you know, seeing new places and exploring it. And again, they're, they're very engaged in going out and they want to go hike or they want to go explore in the city. Bet, and that's cool too, because you know, I've done a lot of the stuff where you kind of tour around and everyone's like always tired or everyone wants to go to bed or wants to just hang out at the hotel. And so it's fun to like be with people that are like, let's go explore. You know, how often do you get to come to San Diego for, you know, free, let's go yeah, hit up, go some, live life yeah. while you're out living so life, the rock, is, the rock star is, life. Yeah. I, 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 I'm going to joke that you're a rock star, yeah. but you're living the rock star life, I mean, especially with this band. Probably living the rock star life. But I'll, you're not doing it like Motley Crue style, you know, no. somebody, you know. And that's crazy too, is, you know, AD and Chad, the drummer, they're both sober. Uh, and so it, it is like, it's so funny because if you see them act after a show, you're like, well, those are the guys that have had some beers. And like, <laughs> no. It's, no, they just, they're super high energy and, and, and goofballs. And so, like, yeah, there is like a lot less pressure to be that Motley Crue style party and yeah. more like just getting to hang out. And I'm so thankful for that because touring for 10 years of, you know, trying to maintain a party presence, at, it's I'd, be, I'd be out for so, sure. What's the biggest crowd you played in front of? We've done some stuff with Chase Rice, several thousand. Luke Combs, we opened for him up in Oklahoma a while back, you know, probably five or six thousand. We just played down this past summer. We played in Florida um, with a bunch of big national bands. It, that was like, that was my first time on a full festival bill where like every single band was like that Nashville style right. big band. Um, and I can't even think Chris Young, I think was the headliner, which I mean, everyone knows Chris Young. And wow. So that, there was a lot of people there for that. That was really cool. That was a, that was like a pinch me moment, you know, you have a favorite venue, um, something that you just small, uh, the blue choice. light or mags, Magnolia motor lines and Fort Worth. Those two are like, those are the home bases on either side of my home for me. And, um, you know, they are just those places where I don't even care about playing music that like the blue light. Holy cow. I saw Jason Isbell there in probably 2013. I, I was definitely not 21 and it was a 21 and up show and I got in somehow. And I was like that kid. That was like my first time to see Jason Isbell. And, you know, I'm with 200 people, you know, just in this music. That's somewhere sanctuary. we need to make a road trip and go to. Oh yeah. Blue light. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, and that's the the thing is, it's, it's grown and it's expanded the, the image of it. So now, like back when when I was going there, uh, and initially there was a, if you a big band would come through, then it would be sold out and be packed. But now it's gotten such a reputation that even bands that maybe not selling out venues all over Texas will sell that place out in the right way, where it'll be a, it'll be a total party atmosphere, and they know that band and they came there. To, like people, I think in Lubbock are really latching on to bands earlier than a lot of the other places in Texas because of the blue light. Yeah. And that's so cool. Like what? A it's all. It's always good to have one of those venues in, in a town that that um. It's almost like Cheatham Street. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. You know, oh, one yeah. Of the, or Saxon Pub. They're all yeah. trying to say, I knew them when they were when they were playing this. Yeah. Well, yeah. I saw them with twenty people in there. Yeah. 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 And that's so cool. So cool. But uh, big venues, like bigger rooms, um, it's really vanilla. And and hopefully in a few years, if success keeps happening with Sam and stuff, I will look back and laugh at this answer. But the House of Blues to me are the coolest rooms. I mean, really? I've been fortunate enough to open for a lot, like for Chase Rice. We did a, two weeks on the East Coast where we pretty much just did House of Blues shows. Mm -hmm. And as a kid growing up, you know, going to seeing like Gary Clark Jr. or something at House of Blues, like that was the venue. Like deal. that's the thing, right? It's like you going know? to Continental or yeah, something. Yeah, like that was like a a a, sh a a show, a place where like no one, you know, bands don't just play there they like you have to like really be somebody and so getting to play those rooms and then hopefully continuing to play those rooms and stuff is so like and they're all different they all have cool yeah. artists you know paintings and stuff and and then like each one's kind of got their like you know the new orleans one's very like zydeco and very like whatever and then cincinnati and stuff is a totally different vibe and that's this is cool man it's like a pinch me moment every time you walk into a house of blues. have y'all played georgia theater 
in I, Athens. I don't yet. think I have played Georgia Theater. I just saw who was down there yesterday. Randy Rogers in Flatland. Yeah, yeah. Flatland. Flatland. That, that's that's home base for yeah. us. Uh, mm-hmm. That's where I seen uh, Randy Rogers for the first time at was Georgia Theater. Uh, we seen uh, probably seen Stony Larue there for the first time. Josh Abbott. Um, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> first time I was exposed to Brent Cobb. Yeah. It the was there, monster. and he was opening for those guys, kind of. Chefs, Chefs is my home base, but uh, Firehouse in Houston uh, yeah, is where I, I grew some, up. I had so. some wild times at Firehouse. Yeah, everybody's had wild times at Firehouse. That's so. mine and is Melissa's that, first time. Firehouse honky-tonk. still Firehouse? Yeah, yeah. It's still there. Okay, it's still there. Yeah, we've. Uh, I haven't played been around Firehouse in a while. We they we kind of switched over to. Um, dang, I can't think of the name of the venue, but Redneck Honky Tonk. No, uh, <laughs> so that's down the road from it. Armadillo Pals. Okay. Um, it's, that's kind of new. Yeah, only in the last couple of years, yeah. and that's been kind of the Houston, you know. I mean, you got your little suburbs. There's, like, the big Texas and spring and stuff. Right. But, like, as far as a Houston venue, yeah, we haven't been on a firehouse in a while, and that's – yeah, that's a – that is a honky-tonk. Well, let's take a break. Uh, we'll yeah, come back. So, uh, we're going to do some resetting of the cameras and stuff. Yeah, so and, I had to sit here and hold this and, microphone. Hey, <laughs> we're going to do a five. When we uh, get back. Yeah, when we get back. All right, All right. We'll see you back in a little bit. We'll be right back. Right back. And we're back. <laughs> Hello, Texas. Uh, it's Tim and I with uh, Bo Bolfing in the house. Man, uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you. This is so cool. And, and if you, you don't know, he drove all the way from Fort Worth. I know. After a photo session with his fiance <laughs> at JCPenney. And he's sitting in my dining room. <laughs> Man, we've oh been talking about God. it so long. I was like, there's probably other days we could have made this work, but I was like, I know we can make today work, so let's just let's and, just and, do it. And I was supposed, so I, uh, Michael Mode and I have been talking all week, and I'm like, hey, let's let's do the interview on Skype tonight. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, uh, let's do it tomorrow night. So I'm busy, and 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 so last night I was like, hey, are you? When I knew I was coming to see uh, you at your house, I was like, hey, are you busy? Because in my head, you're. Waco. Yeah, he still lived yeah. in Waco. And you're like, yeah, let's do it. And you're like, I'll be driving in from Fort. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. You don't have to he drive. Don't live in Waco. Yeah, everybody. I just, my favorite takeaway from the story is that, like, I am the plan B for a bass player. So, that, no, you know, you're for, for mode, too. <laughs> I'm talking about you, Michael. Just know I, I don't have anything to do with all that. <laughs> I'm, that's, that's, uh, that's the interview guy. And, and I, I've probably told him before. Look, Bo should have been the first interview yeah. we ever did. And yes. He obviously and, and did I, not. I have told you in the me. past that I was I going to interview that. you. Yeah, yeah. I, I've contacted the people that are on my 12, and he's one of the 12 that we are going to talk. Uh, I'm just thrilled that you're here. I mean, yeah, that's so excited. One of the first interviews we should probably do, I think, should be Bo Boffy. <laughs> but I want to do it right. Yeah. Well, here and, we are and doing you know it right. What? This, is, this is probably the most right we've done it. Yeah, I I am absolutely okay with that, uh, yeah. and um, yeah, it's, it's been really cool watching you guys set up, and then well, it's heck, it's process. been cool watching the whole Texas thing evolve and grow and kind of become Thanks, its own entity. Well, let's let's talk fun. about that. Um, we've had a, a good two weeks since our last podcast. Yeah, yeah, um, really good. Yeah, you got uh, laughter uh, that's coming out. I, yeah, and, it's and, good. And, probably, probably uh, it. it People remember, uh, I asked a question on Facebook. I'll just you know, let you know, it was a couple of weeks ago. I, I mentioned something on Facebook. I think I uh, made a post, said, just, if you're friends with me, uh, this was probably on my personal page. Um, just, it, it's there, Tim Murphy. Come say hi. If as long as we got common people, I'll, I'll, I might be your friend. Anyway, just said, uh, laughter, what's your first thoughts? We're going to address some of that. So uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit. That should be coming up. 
It'll it'll come out before this podcast is uh, on the air. Well, there you go. Um, so by the time you're listening, there's this, some and, uh, and inception going on right and, there. And, well, I've I've seen some uh, previews of it, and uh, it's good. It's good. I I mean, there's I, it's got everything from whole white babies to um, <laughs> man. Put that. That doesn't sound good. Eddie Murphy. In, in context, it means <laughs> in, in Eddie context, Murphy, it's awesome. Um, <laughs> And uh, God and losing weight all in there together. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 there you there, go. There's some controversial uh, things that you say there, but I don't think it's anything wrong on it. it. It's all, it's all. Listen, nobody has convinced me that, that, that like half white babies exist. So it's, the, I, it's, a, it's a thing that nobody can tell me. I'd like to see something other than a whole white baby it's, but it's there the content is there it you is spoke worth, the truth it is so. worth looking at and if somebody can provide me some feedback as to what the alternative would be i'd be interested in it uh it's been fun <laughs> to watch the featured artists of the day take off a little bit more and more yeah. over time yeah how do you how do you feel about that i, I think mean, it's, i think it's really cool and and it's been a cool blend of like the different types you know, uh, you got like the, I know the other, the Ronnie Chef, I think, right? Yeah, we're doing influencers. Yeah, you should see the photographers <laughs> and pretty wild. You should see the spreadsheet. I got, oh, I've man. Got, I've got 16 different buckets with 24, 36 people in each bucket. Wow. Like guitar player. I can't player. feed him content fast yeah. enough. That's awesome. And, and it's all, it's scheduled for the year. Yeah. I'm now moving around a lot. This last week we did. Uh, um, I'm so proud of him. Chase Satterwhite. Mm -hmm. Chase yeah. Satterwhite got a big response. His mom uh, chimed in, and uh, yeah, because that dude is awesome. With, yeah, Shane Chase Smith, cool dude. Yeah. And uh, oh, this Shane Smith. That there, you know, you was talking about mm -hmm. Sam saying, "Oh, sorry," Sam saying collectively. Yeah. You know, you guys all together make this one. They very much, I Body think, that. follow yeah. that same that philosophy. same motto, philosophy yeah. kind of thing, and, sure. it, and it absolutely makes sense because they're they're on a completely different level. I, there's a couple of you know Texas country uh, circuits around, and and I don't not saying like rating, but they've moved out of uh, some into some other circuits that yeah. uh, it takes a pretty good bit to get moved into. Yeah, not to like so. go off on the on the tangent too far but that i think is my favorite cd that came out this past year i think so with yeah. Mary? Yeah. oh my god yeah, yeah probably absolutely that start to finish that that we, project we could awesome. do a whole different five and talk yeah, about that's, our that's a CDs. whole five yeah. in its own yeah so right. sorry to pull you off that's, that's just right. an yeah, amazing yeah. bass player without a doubt so we did that we did uh drummer brooks robinson oh with, yeah uh, jake ward mm -hmm. uh he's he's a good friend too and yeah, uh rock. that guy's got, got some good energy he got a kick out of it yeah he's fun he's just fun to watch my favorite one to watch of the last two weeks was Tyler Bigley. He's out of Colleen. He's a local artist out okay. of Colleen. His mom is the best um, agent for a band that I've ever seen. And she Man. needs to be hired by somebody. He's sure. got that core following that just within 15 minutes, it was shared like 60 times. <coughs> wow. That's yeah, awesome. It was, it was, that that's is, a, he's a Belton Temple. He's a Colleen. Cool. Uh, but, yeah. uh, that means something whenever you've got a, 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 a maybe a, a artist who hasn't maybe hit some, some bigger stages. Uh, yeah. To have, I think such that's a, that core early on group is the only way you get to those next places. Yeah, you you know, got to, you've got to get that yeah. that foundation. It, it kind of reminded me of a couple other, you know, yeah. sort of local bands well, that I know, his, and I think that's really cool. This summer, his mom called me and said, "Please come to his show." Everybody likes pictures, and right. uh, but like, please come see Tyler. And I've known him from Shep's uh, in the crowd mostly. Yeah. What, what I posted is mom's love. Uh, Hello, Texas, because uh, I've had six moms uh, message and say thanks for. Hey, can, can, can we get featured? How, how yeah. do I get featured? I've, yeah. I've actually had two people call and say, how do I get featured? And, and hey, you need to feature my son. I'm like, okay, wow. it's coming. It's, he's on the spreadsheet. Yeah. He's November 7th, okay? Like, you got a long well, year ahead of you. Yeah. It's coming. So, you know, he, he could go forward and go backwards. Tell him to tighten up, grind, yeah. grind. And, um, let's do a five. Go for it. You ready for that? Um, and I got I got an idea. What's your, what's your idea? Of, instead of just me and you kind of coming up. No, with I five? I picked this five when I knew that he was coming. Because because it, it I, I'd kind of like to know because there, there's some things I sort of want to know about this. Okay, it's going to be the five guitar players that we like to watch on stage. Not necessarily your five favorites okay. because I could put the five favorites I like to listen to. 
But right. as a photographer, Bo is, if you're not at the top, you're one of the, the top three. There's a bunch e- of derpy faces easily. all over the place. It, and and <laughs> truth be told, when you played O'Brien's the night with Dalton Domino, I uh, literally posted a collage. a collage of 27 Bo Bolfing faces that you made while you were playing. That was that was how we come about. It was because when he plays, he does this more than play. It, you, you see there, he's in it. Right. Yeah. Every, you, he's in it. He embraces where he's at. Because if he's not, he's an amazing actor. He's his conviction for yeah. what he is doing is true and real. And 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 even if you don't like what he's playing, his energy, if his energy can attract you to stop for a minute and just listen and absorb the whole thing, I don't know a better person that can do that. That's like probably the most amazing compliment i've ever received and uh, i think i'm probably gonna have that put on my headstone one day so like Sorry. do not cut that part out at no, all no, because no, i no, need no, i need no, that in no, there look, it, look. it's it's real it, it, yeah, it is awesome. exactly look. what it is and and, and it draws you kind. in and and i think before there was four y'all that did that and we used to talk about the dalton days yeah. and, and he brought that that and drew, drew it in and just like now you're with other guys that kind of do the same thing. Yeah. So now there's what six of y'all up there that, that just, and you're one of those that yeah. it's a great match. I've got like 10 or 11 off the top of my head, but when I was sitting in the car waiting for Bo to get in the car, Oh, all right. So, so right. you go with the first one. I'll go first. Um, but, but we can't list him. No, no. He, and, and he's out of the yeah, list. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we're clear. You're disqualified from yeah. the list. You're you've, yeah. you've reached that upper echelon of well, the compliment. Like y'all are giving me off. I, f- I forget the well, list. Uh, you go first. You're our guest. Oh, shoot. Okay. So, um, somebody that you look I'm just, forward am I just to naming one right now. Yeah, just one. It doesn't, none of this is in order okay, because it's cool. what we come just up five with. Well, I'll tell you, uh, back in the Dalton days, we ran around a turnpike a lot and Ryan Engelman on stage, uh, that was always like, there's just a swagger about the way he would. I mean, I can see it when I close my yeah, mouth. I can't I, too. He, you know, would maybe have a cigarette hanging out of his mouth, but he would go back to that drum kit and kind of did the little head bob and had his little the, telly and got the foot on the amp. Yeah, and just rocked out, man. It was just, it was. You just knew that was an early a person that I would watch, and I was like, I hope that when people see me, they they see this what I'm seeing of him and the way that, you know, he was playing. It always won me over. So that's my, that's my first one to throw okay. down. You got one. You want me to go? You go. I'm happy to think on this a little bit. Um, I'm going to go with one of the big guys, John Carroll with, yeah. uh, Corey with Morrow. Corey Morrow. Yeah. It's, it's, it's easy. It's one yeah. of the ones that comes to mind when you start is just, he's such a pro. Yeah. He's not in, he's such a mild mannered voice off stage and gets up there on stage and can just play anything. So and, he plays um, the, the guitarist. If I make sure I got him right, Corey Morrow, um, the ones he plays that their um, original guitars always got like a very uh, cool pattern or something. Wood grain pattern in it. Yeah, usually. Um, that guitar <coughs> maker, I can't remember his name, but that guitar maker is from Waco and actually makes huh. them for him. That's wild. I don't, I think that John Carroll gets a disservice in my list because of how freaking good he is right. that I sometimes forget how much fun he is as an entertainer. Because when I think the first thing I think of when I hear John Carroll is like, like the maestro, the, the, like the master, like that dude and, is like, and he doesn't think he can play. He's no, like, Oh no, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, you're yeah. the, there's like, a, a YouTube thing, a Texas music TV, Texas music mm-hmm. scene. Well, I guess it's a yeah. real TV Texas thing too, scene. but yeah, but Top uh, pure voice. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I remember like, you know, especially my time with Dalton as a young person, th- those shows were, were like really stressful because like it was a one take, you know, you got one shot to play, you know, and a lot of the videos, they're very real. They're very live. There's some flubs and you go watch like a Corey Morrow video and it's just John Carroll putting on a guitar clinic, playing every single note on the fretboard <laughs> and not missing a single one. And you're like, Holy cow. Like, does this guy miss a note? And it's like, no, he really doesn't. He's just, while smiling and having a great time. Right? This is like playing cards, and I want to play my John Carroll card before everybody yeah, else Yeah, I got to get that down. So, yeah, hey, that's a win. I, yeah. I wasn't going to – I wasn't thinking about that. Playing play an ace, Tim. You got to have something. A whiskey Meyer, so. Oh, John Jeffers. John Jeffers or Cody Tate? Uh, yeah. Cody. Which one's got the, you big, know what? Big, which one's you know got what? the great big beard? Cody. That's Cody. You can – you can. They, they both come as a set. Yeah. Okay. I've I'm got, taking, I'm, I'm I've got a set them. in my mind. So yeah. I'm, taking we'll them, I'm taking them both then. Y'all yeah, are gonna the, give the me the duo. pair. I'm yeah. taking it, and 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 I and I don't mind explaining. I mean, yeah. the, the dude with the big beard. Yeah. Come on, man, the Cody. bell bottoms, and uh, you, 
takes me back to like 1975. I was two, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But whenever I look at, at, at my folks and, and the music that I love from that era, just regardless of who it was, yeah. you know, I start thinking about the who and I start thinking about um, Dr. Hook, you know, and, and I start thinking all, all that. And that cat just kind of leaned back, you know, and just kind of, you can't get mm -hmm. more rock and roll than that. There's a lot of just swagger. Just those guys are just up there ripping. Yeah. It. It's, and you, you, make you, it you look never leave a, you never leave a whiskey Meyer show without thinking you just saw, you saw a something. rock and roll show. Oh I, my god! I, I, since from day one, when 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 they were just a young little band and there wasn't a huge crowd, they were still drawn big. Yeah, it was like, oh my god, what I did seen, I just I see? I seen them in the backyard, not sold out. I think <clears throat> once, yeah. and 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 this past year they played held two. At least one show opening for the literally yeah. the Rolling Stones in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever. yeah, that's right. It was in Chicago. Yeah. Your second one. Um, okay, y'all probably don't know him. That's fine. I don't. Um, I don't but uh, his name is Eric Steedley. Okay, and he's a lead guitar player for a band called Lanco. And oh, uh, I know Lanco. Lanco is. That dude is hilarious on stage. I mean, he's like just ripping the guitar he'll spin he'll be spinning around running back and forth on each side of the stage i mean just the energy there is like again you can tell that that is a very real emotion for him like he's having, having a blast a it's like it's like the person singing in their shower you know what i mean like they're just in there singing their heart out, having a great time he literally doesn't act like there's anyone watching him like it looks like he probably almost doesn't think people are watching him and it's the coolest thing to just watch. and him. you see that yeah it's, oh yeah there's a conviction yeah it's just it's just so much fun to to watch him do his thing so and i like you know i I actually kind of like he's, <laughs> Yeah, and honestly, he's like hair goals. Uh, he's got like this curly hair <laughs> yeah. that is like, whenever I put my hair down, I'm like, yeah, I look just like that. Like, cool. And then I look in the mirror, I'm like, how does he make his look cool? Like, what? I cannot. But yeah, he's definitely a hair goals person, too. He's got some All right. killer hair. I'll, I'll go next. And I'm, I'm going to go with one I don't think you know. You might know. Okay. Um, Billy Joe High. Mm. He's the guitar player for Jared Birmingham. Okay, yeah. Uh, he's That's also cool. a producer for a lot of bands. Um, right and I never think of him until I'm at a Jared Birmingham show and I watch him and I'm like, holy crap. He's just amazing at it. And he's low key and quiet. And even on stage until he plays and he's got the, he's got the face. So, you know, yeah, the face just rips. and, and I always walk away. First of all, if you get to see Jared Birmingham with this yeah. full band, it is unbelievable. It's, it's like, no matter where he's at, you're at the best honky tonk you've ever been to. And and, and you you wonder, <clears throat> it, it it's so good, and you wonder why isn't he selling out like mm -hmm. Billy Bob? Right. And I, stuff. I, I why he's not in the same breath yeah. as George Jones, and and I I know I exaggerate with Jared Birmingham. I don't understand why he's not up there with all the big big guns because he half the people that have played with him in the past are playing for. Cody Johnson now, uh, Prusky. Yeah. I mean, I, I, all, all the bands you know, go through Jared and learn and yeah, and go it's, off it's, the bigger it's things. Another one, you know, you just seen a country act. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So that, and and I always overlook him. And any any time I'm thinking of and the last time I saw them at Sheps and he played, I was just uh, just drawn to the way that, that guy can play. That's awesome. All right, number two, John Dempsey. John <laughs> Dempsey. Yeah, good uh, one. Uh, Man, phew, oh, man, I had the honor of, of doing some video work for him recently, and and um, his current project is um, uh, Honeybees. Yes, and they played at Heartfest. Cool, mm, that's right. Yeah, I that's right. Was... Yeah, this is a little three piece deal. Um, it was uh, Josh Barner playing drums. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, Barner music. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, man, what? Yeah. And he, that... I knew him when he was playing with. Uh... Oh wait, no. Brandon Reiner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I was gonna say. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Bernard is uh, on my five of the best people on the planet. I mean, he just. That's awesome. He's and Jason Carter on bass. Yeah. Yeah. And it is just, uh, it is just rock and roll. Cool. And 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 John is one of those people that he he will strut it out there. Mm -hmm. And and you look at him, he just looks like old country boy kind of thing. But you can you can see the rock and roll in him. Yeah. yeah. And that's when it comes out. And he just does his thing and it just uh Yeah, it's awesome. All right. Number three. Okay. You, you can use my cheat sheet if you'd like. Man, I so I'm purposefully staying a little bit 
out the of the <laughs> Texas thing only because you don't want I've to got so many friends right. and there's so many that I do love watching play. And if I named five and there's 30, I could, I, it I, would be a weird I, deal. Or, be mad, like, I told, so I I'm, totally I'm purposely it. kind of going broad on this. Listen, y'all don't be hating on Bo. It's just, we're putting him on the spot. Yeah. Yeah. And we know that. My, so I'm actually going to go with this girl named Elle Puckett. And she's the lead guitar player for Maggie Rogers. And Maggie is like probably my top three favorite artists right now. I'd listen to her music probably once a day. And Elle is her guitar player. And it's just awesome. Really? Some really cool. I mean, for those that really know what I play and listen to, they know that I'm kind of a a weirdo. Like I don't play like your traditional styles. I'm not really a country guy. I'm not really a rock guy. I'm kind of like in that weird pop region Mm -hmm. and she makes a lot of really interesting and fun noises that happen out of a guitar and play really cool parts that almost sound like they weren't written for a guitar that it's really like inspiring and fun to do you write that down because i I, I, I did we'll need to be i'm 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 keeping notes there's not a lot of female no lead guitar players and you know it's crazy and like there's another one i was thinking of too when i was trying to think of some guitar players her name's madison cunningham and she's a badass la guitar player but she's definitely not a super high energy performer she's a very like technical you know motive and jazzy kind of thing and and that's really cool and i think that is where a lot of these females find um, a, a really cool spot is in that like jazz world because they're just so good and so technical and are so um, able to play these parts and do it so well and so smooth yeah smooth movements it, between your fingers that, that works out well but L is like full on and I think Maggie's got three girls in her band with her or whatever I think and uh, and that is a really cool a really cool band and I do think in the pop world you find a lot of the the really badass female musicians too it's just so hard touring we when I started with Dalton had a female singing background vocals and just when you don't have a lot of money it's really hard to provide a, an environment where everyone is comfortable right. and so <laughs> you don't that, think about that yeah no 100 percent. i mean because you're like well we have one hotel room and it's two queen size beds and there's five people and one's a girl <laughs> well that's a little bit uncomfortable it's for dangerous you know? too, and so. there's definitely there's definitely some that are you know more than happy to like i just want to play music let's make that happen and so like yeah it usually does just work out but it's still as you get bigger you're like man i really want to like I would like to be able to just like fart and not have to worry about offending her. <laughs> right. Or like, I'm sure she does too. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, sure. So, and, 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 and the rest of your man probably yeah. too. So. And, and, and I, I don't know this for a fact, but you know, I, I know a few of them. I think that's just sort of what happens and it just kind of becomes, Oh, I farted. And yeah. You can't deal with that. For sure. It's, you know, kind of, a, well, I that, that's, it. I think that's but why still, you do a lot of times it has to be in an industry or it has to be in a genre where the artist can put together a team with, already enough headway that's in a bigger category than some of the Texas categories. Can and I've, I've always worried about, you know, I'm not worried. I've always, I've always kind of, I've always <laughs> sort of wondered about the bands that, you know, the, the, the flatlands, you know, once yeah, upon we, a time had Laura, Laura. Jane, uh, blue water highway. Mm-hmm. had um, And it's definitely doable. You just have to like name, specifically, yeah. you know, be prepared for that. And that's just, you know, part of the yeah. tour for them. That's the part of the experience. It's an extra layer of, you know, preparedness. But I, but I do think, again, so just kind of keep cycling around this. As I've thought about it more, it's also probably less of a, a thing. It's it's requires more professionalism. It does. So if you're in a truly a bar band that? and you're truly <coughs> in a, a, a band where like, yeah, we just play some music, but we really enjoy getting drunk or we really just like go out to, you know, tour the, the local bar scene, you're probably not going to be able to accommodate that situation. But if you're anything that's a real touring operation or a real professional situation, it's, it's pretty easy to make that happen. And, you and, just have to And most of the band has families. And, yeah. And, yeah. And, but I mean, it's and, not, it's not your 20 year old getting drunk and trying to hook up band I, that, I, I, that's going to work the, out. the appearance always uh, or the um you know with flatland you yeah. know never had Lord jane i did just the what i've seen and maybe I, i'm old and naive or something and that's mm. that's cool if i am i'm okay with that but <laughs> but they never gave off the vibe that they were anything less than professional right yeah uh, you know Cleto, i'm sure that's and, the vibe they wanted to give yeah. off too, and so. you know you, and Cleto is a very professional person you know, is a pretty and, and you pull each one of them aside i mean they're, yeah. they're just they're still clowns you know they're, they're still who they are right. individually but collectively together they never and and uh blue water highway was mm-hmm. the same way yeah. and you know they were all individually professional and, yeah, and you know you're together. Lame. Sure. absolutely you know so. yeah all right am i so, next okay right. just don't take mine <laughs> i think i'm going to what is it rio trippiano nope you didn't oh. take it you know rio is 
Yeah, oh yeah. Copper Chief. Copper yeah. Chief's guys. Yeah. Uh, got to hang out with him a little bit at uh, Coke Fest. What? Last year. <laughs> oh my gosh. And, no, I mean, me started. Have you, do you, have you had the pleasure of meeting Rio and them? Yeah. Yeah, we With, with I, Copper Chief. So, yeah. I mean, nothing, I, nothing we need to say. I don't know yeah. anybody okay. that, that has Pretty met good. him off stage that doesn't think that he's just one of the oh, my yeah. coolest God. guys. I watched him you know, hold a ladder for the guys backstage to fix the sign. I watched yeah. him. Um, and, uh, and those guys are. A hundred and fifty yeah. or turn they are on they are turned they are, <coughs> they ain't turned up to eleven. Yeah. They are turned up, y'all. And, and he can, all the time. He's heavy metal can all play. the time. Yeah. That is a great yeah. thing. There's a few yeah. people in the scene and he's one of them that they look like they're a guitar hero character. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like they are so rock and roll <laughs> yeah. that they look like they could literally, you could design a character it's off like, of them. And and somebody like, should. And, yeah. And, and yeah. you have control and you pumped up mm-hmm. the size and the yeah, talent exactly. and the, the, yeah. the charisma. And, and, and you and, see him building up, you know, you, listen, seems starting off as like a little skinny rock and roll kid, you know, cause all y'all were skinny, you know, you starting off like rock and roll kid. And then <laughs> Wait, by the, <laughs> But then whenever you get whenever you get done with him, I mean, he looks like Ric Flair. You know, he's got he's, a case. He's, he's huge. Yeah. Uh, but he's so nice. And you, and, just, you just and, make him just beat muscle about him. And he can, oh. I, I can, he, I can, he can play with anybody. I mean, yeah. he, he, he's got some chops. And he, and he looks good with yeah. him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So good. And it's cool. Yeah, that's a, that's a good card to play. Yeah, you suck. I took it. You're gonna no, I, I mean I got another one. I, that was a really, really good one. There's a long list r- r- still. Yeah, still you, you give it. That and, is a and, good one. And we got one on here that one of us has got to say. Uh, so. I, I'm good. Can I go? Yeah, your turn. Michael Otis Parrish. No, there you go. There That's the is. one I was talking oh about. Oh my god. <laughs> you know Michael? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Known, and 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 known him for a bit. I I, I, I tell dude. you what, just outside, aside from the the pure 200 percent that that cat drops on the stage right then when he's putting it down and, and listen that that doesn't stop with him you go to a co-show i don't care if you a hater just take it i don't want to hear it yeah you take just shut up we ain't talking that vibe that energy the guys on that stage uh-huh. yeah, that's not awesome. that's not just some place just to go slinging beer i mean it, it is a sh- rock and roll show well, and they put it on and that comes because the people on that stage every i'm gonna of like them. make you take this duo though because i personally love shiloh powers the other guitar player with the co oh so yeah, yeah, yeah i think yeah. i think that yeah, that is the same thing as a whiskey myers yeah. thing is i think you got to do that up because yeah, they both right. play together so well and they're right. and, and and man just i wasn't sure what that change was going to be like with because Flushy? because yeah. knowing what flu she had yeah absolutely I, listen I, i've never even asked don't care to know what the deal is i, I, I i'm just going to go with with flu she knew it was time to to be a dad and and I'm as far as I'm concerned, that's the story. And if there's I another don't one, I don't, story wanna, or not, so. I don't care. But <clears throat> knowing what he brought with 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 it was Michael, tough shoes to fill. Yeah, yeah. What's this other guy gonna be like? And man, <laughs> he kills it. it it's it's well, and it's just great. as good. It's a different level good, yeah. and it's the the, the whole guys. But the, Michael, Michael, because uh, when he gets done throwing down. He'll still pray for you. Yeah, I was going to say, the first time I met him. He's still going to love you. The first time I met him was at Chef's, and he was standing on the side of the stage. I don't remember who was. he. They were the opener for Sam Riggs, as a matter of fact. Oh, Uh, oh, I remember that that show. That was for Yeah, but right before you came. Uh, and somebody else was playing before and he was standing on the stage watching and I just struck up a conversation, thought he was the roadie. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and he was, he's like, Oh, hi, I'm, I'm Michael. Hitchberg. Yeah. I go, you play? He goes, yeah, I play with, uh, with, uh, Co Wetzel and, well, and you, now you're the, making him sound like no, no, a 12 no, no, year old no, no, little no, no. girl. I, and I'm doing he, that on purpose. Uh, it, he, he's, he, but he, but he was nice. so mild nice. mannered and yeah. nice. And, and he just goes there and just... we talk for 30 minutes. Yeah. And, and he's just so calm well, Then he got up cool. on stage. And he melted my face off, yeah. and I was mad you because won't. he just lied to me on the side of the stage and Who talked to me like was a- that extremely nice young man. And and my God, what just happened and to him? So I was mad, and then when the show was over, he came up to me and put his arm around me and said, "Thank you for taking pictures." And and I'm like, "Which one are you?" Yeah. Are, and yeah, I'm gonna tell y'all what that is. 
y'all call, y'all say whatever. It's the Holy Ghost. Listen, I have seen. I, listen, I, somebody get the Holy Ghost. I have seen what it will do to them. And and listen, everybody thinks that uh, rock and roll and all that stuff is all of the devil. Man, the devil stole it. You know, King David and Solomon, they made a big, loud noise for the Lord. And and so that talent that's in you, that's of God, young man. Just let me tell you. And that's what it does. Well, and it, he goes up there and he puts it down and can't nobody else do it unless they got the Holy Ghost. And that's it, just how it's going to be. Been fun I love watching, you, Michael. <laughs> it's been fun watching him on social media with his uh i say his new wife but i think they've been married, married a couple years but they're still yeah. newlyweds the way that he treats her like yeah. a queen and he's got that's a awesome. dog that's on social media uh rosie and, and they, they just yeah, yeah they just got a so new wise. dog they just got another dog so it, it's just fun to to watch from afar yeah and, and then he catches he catches he catches some stuff <laughs> because he he does believe very very hard and he's yeah. a good christian guy and he catches some stuff so and it's fun to see him just handle it yeah, good good call. Thank yeah. you, thank you. That was, yeah, that, that, that was gonna have to 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 do that one next if you didn't. So, all right, number four, all you're right. free to go anywhere. I'm gonna do a duo, um, the Chase Rice guitar players, Chris Locke and John Suki. Um, those guys are like a, a metal band and country. You've told show. me this before. Yeah, they, we those have guys, talked about that the, before. Yeah. The and honestly, it's the whole band. But since we're just doing guitar players, those two guys, you know, they I've I've stolen a lot of things, a lot of little tricks yeah. uh, that I watched them do in their live show that I would never even seen or thought about, and they execute them so flawlessly. And and somehow, like, even though they, out of all the guitar players, are definitely the most professional in the in the band of them having to kind of put on a show they still make it seem so genuine and still do it out of such a place of real music. And they're so positive and so involved in that, that it's, it's contagious, but they'll do things. Their encore, at least last my song, they were playing an Avenged Sevenfold song and uh, they are playing half the song, both of them side by side, upside down on the guitar like this, <laughs> where they're shredding. I mean, just going crazy, banging their head. So, you know. and, and I'm going to pause you. Yeah. Chase Rice. Huh? Nashville. Yeah, big like the probably the poster child of the bro country movement. And but but these are, look are the, are the players. Major yeah. look, part, players. Part of Hello Texas is yes. these players don't get any yeah, attention. For sure. I mean, nobody knows I just, the name. And, and that's well, why I'm so thrilled. And, and I guess that's about where it. I'm I'm kind of going with that yeah, at, is, that, is I know there's the Nashville haters and, yeah. and that's probably the, the, the bigger that's, thing that's, that's, that's that we that's fine. I want I understand it to be that. clear. Yeah. For those it's Nashville definitely haters, not, the it's level definitely of not talent. Me. I'm definitely a Nashville and a Texas lover. I, no, just, no, no. I listen to everything. You know, well, like, just people just wanted to be clear that yeah, the absolutely. talent that is still there, man, you don't get there without being freaking talented. Freaking piano players and drummers in a D tier Nashville band that could out shred me right. on guitar all day. Right, and it's the most play, getting to play with bands like that is the most humbling and like encouraging thing at the same time because because they like, bring it to a, those oh, guys bring it to another level that. Yeah. that you, you want to you kind want of, to reach that level, yeah, yeah. And then also, you know, you see that's that moving these guys, forward. There's there's a there's a thing when you tour that many dates a year, and there's plenty of Texas bands, American Aquarium, and oh, you know, nah, yeah. whatever Texas sure, scene sure, sure. bands. Yeah, but yeah. there's plenty of bands that hit a ton of dates a year. But when you start getting into the the national picture, these bands are playing a ton of dates, and there's a reason those those musicians have the gig. It's because they are extremely positive, extremely like professional focused. And just like, you know, you they're contagious to be around. They're just so freaking nice. It sounds that, like they've always got these great humble, attitudes. They act like, yeah, they act like they are, you know, some little joke bar band guy. And it's like, know. no, no. They, yeah, I don't I don't know if they do. I mean, truly, I think they're so like they've bought into the system of being humble and having to be a team player and they consider themselves a side guy so much that they don't even think that, you know, they're like, ah, I'm just a I'm just here. You know, and they're happy to be there, and that's and they prove it. When yeah, one hundred percent. That is cool. So cool. So those All two right. guys are they're awesome. Am I next? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna cheat. Cody Canada. Okay, front man in it. <laughs> yeah, but he's also. <laughs> Have you the, ever seen? Yeah, yeah, that's another good one. That is really good. I, yeah. yeah, look. And and he is a front man, but he's also the guitar player, and he can shred, and he's How great at it. Rare does that happen? And and just being friends with Mike Stanley. Yeah, you know, Mike can play a guitar and everything, but he will tell you that to be able to play as good as somebody like Cody Kennedy can, yeah, 
and to be able to be the front guy as well. And, and listen, as far as I'm concerned, from the band of the bands of the bands, uh, you know, cross Canadian rugby yeah. and then yeah. take it to where it was. I mean, and I know it was a collective effort, but let's and, just, let's just call it what it is. And if we're, if we're talking that, that organic, is, just yes, playing, sir. there's no act going on. He's not pretending to do anything other than be no. Cody what Canada. A, what a noticeable, distinguishable sound that yeah. he has created. I mean, you, he can pretty much start playing the first couple of little licks of, most of the songs that they play each night and you're like i know exactly who that is you like, know it's that, a sound that, that is defined is. yeah he's got he could, he could go anywhere and do anything and I it would still be I recognizable think, as him yep yeah. absolutely now Just don't part of that tall. is an unfair thing the other guys don't get because he's a front man and so he gets to kind of decide what he gets right. to play whereas the other guys are forced to play other parts but yeah out of the list that's the guy that if you hear something you're like i know that's cody canada yeah. right there and, and, and you ain't mad about it yeah that's super cool that's definitely iconic to have All that right. number four tim Josh Serato. Josh Serato. Good call. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, yeah that's, that's, a, that's one that, um, yeah, I, I just like shooting him. You know what? Can I take a two for on that one? Yeah, you have to, I'm going to force you again. Okay. Yeah. You, 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 you just, just can't look at one side of the stage. Yeah. So and that, that's probably a good, I mean, that's something you're drawn to is the guitar the, bands. The yeah. And I've, have, I've actually, I've actually, I've got a picture that is just, uh, it's somewhere, it's packed up now. It made we'll, me right we'll, over there of we'll just put, a guitar. We'll put, it, we'll put it on the podcast. Just a guitar. Uh, just him. And yeah. the ring, I think his ring's got that like an Emerald um, Texas State thing or um, what? It, I've, yeah. I've got it that yeah, close and tight. That's all. Or, or maybe it's Texas on his knobs. It may he's, be Texas on his knobs. He's another one off stage that's just cool to yeah. to talk to, just for even a brief moment. He he's just, just every time I, I and he just may be just extremely stoned every time I see him. I don't know. I don't know, but I, I walk by and he's just always. Just I have really no cool. shame, and I've made it. I've said it a bunch. I have no shame admitting when I started out, I was like, I wanted to be him. Like everything yeah, he did, I, I loved every note he played. Uh, his, back when he was with Six Market Six Boulevard. Market. That, that's I mean, the first time I saw him, too. Yeah, yeah. holy cow. Like, the stuff he was playing then is like was insane, and he was young. He was you know, probably less than 20 at that time. Yeah. And uh, But I've been fortunate enough to work on some projects with him, with Dalton, um, and where he played some of the studio stuff, and it was just a lot of fun to watch him be in that environment. Yeah, he, like, he, in he, the produces, creative he zone. produces engineers or yeah, something like he's, that, I guess. Actually, I not, he probably wouldn't even care, but he, I think he still to this day considers himself to be a drummer primarily and then he's just like you know i'm a drummer that plays guitar. he's, yeah, he's a, a phenomenal musician. drummer i mean he can play drums as well as anyone you know it's crazy to, um but uh yeah there was actually back really early on the day someone tweeted something mean about me uh, back when i actually would read mean tweets where they said something <laughs> along the lines of like uh bo just wants to be josh serato 2.0 or something like that and i'm sitting there like yeah you're damn man, right i do like what's man, wrong with that the guy's amazing man what, yeah, yeah like if i if i could yeah, I just thought I was saying, like, don't insult him like that. <laughs> yeah, why, why, so what? Yeah, how's that a bad thing? Yeah. You know, and uh, go, yeah. All right, I gotta go. Um, Brady Bell with uh, Parker McCollum. Mm -hmm. Beal is it Beal or? Uh, you know what? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Brady is cool. I my daughter shot him at uh, Coke Fest and. Mm -hmm. Every photo of Parker McCollum's band was a Brady with yeah. her because she was. And that's got to be an anomaly, right? I feel like most cameras are focused yeah. on Parker. <laughs> well, so, like, she, that's a good thing. She had gotten her photo with Parker and backstage before. So she had she moved was on. Done with him. She had moved on. You dumped him. <laughs> that's so, awesome. Yeah, you're pretty and everything, but yeah. oh, you're not him. Thank but, God we were there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> good he's, job, he's, Bailey. It, of, of the ones on my list, he's just consistent i guess is the best way to say that he's just he eases up there and just puts it down it's fun it's fun to watch i mean this is a list of fun to watch and he yeah even though he's the quietest of the five on my list he's still rocks out to these songs and and has a, a vibe about him that nobody else has did i skip you i don't know Oh, Serato. Yeah, I did skip you. We skipped over you for your fifth one. Well, gunny son. You were talking about the Yeah, I probably Serato. I just thrown in and put you, on you every were talking about Serato, thing, so. So. I don't even know what this guy's name really is because I just like follow him on Instagram. Uh -huh. Uh but his I think his name is Isaac Bolivar. 
Bolivar. Uh, but he plays with the night game. He played with Seal back in the day. Um, shoot, he's uh, Harry Hudson, I think. A uh, bunch of people. And uh, he's just, he's got neon green hair. He, the guitar matches the hair. It's like neon green, like 80s oh, Ibanez cool. style thing. And uh, it's that like super fun, high energy pop stuff. And he gets plenty of time to shred. And he does. And he is like. All right. Now we got food in our mouth. Go, cool, Tim. What's number five? Paul Eason. Paul uh, Eason. He's with um, Kevin Country? Fowler. Yeah, no, he's not with Kevin Fowler anymore. What? No, he's with Hill Country. He's with Hill Country, Zane Williams band. You didn't know that? Yeah. Wow. Right. Really? Right. Holy crap. That's a good call. Um, that is a. That makes it even more oh. hilarious that. Paul Eason played with Kevin Fowler for years, and he just left and went to Hill Country, who's just played. Their first Ten shows. He just, I mean, shows, yeah, yeah. I, I knew, I knew Zane was doing something new. Mm-hmm. I'd, I'd heard about it, and I, I just haven't really. So, I, I've unplugged a little bit. So, if you're on stage with Kevin Fowler, you have to be an entertainer. Period. Yeah, yeah. And, and he and, is, and 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 not to the point that he plays up Kevin because Kevin's like a PhD in guitarology or something. Now like you want to that. talk about a good guitar player? Kevin Fowler right. probably knows, forgot more about guitar than no, everybody I, else in he Texas. He definitely knows. deserves to be in the top five. Well, that's, right. Right. he's got like some kind of degree, and it has something. To he do. went to the Guitar Technical Institute in Los yeah. Angeles, and where's the lead guitar for Dangerous Toys, the uh, rock band in the eighties? Yeah, insane. Yeah, he's he's legit. He just doesn't have to anymore. He's right. got people to do it for him. So he can just get up there and drink beer and have a good time. It's, he, I. I I, every now and then you'll get Kevin. He'll play a little bit. You know, it seems like it, it just kind of hangs on him more. He's somebody who who I'd love to just see rip for just, a little bit, just yeah. rip it up and, and just play. Yeah, and that's it. His wall in his little jam room or something. Yeah, something like that. Just down. somebody yeah. I'd, I'd love. I mean, I'd love for that to turn into a, a two or three minute guitar solo, just somewhere yeah. in the middle of his set, and just be a complete and total attention whore, and and just take it. You know, I think he he. He deserved that time if he wanted to, and I'd give him my attention for it. But yeah, Paul Eason. Yeah, good call. Without a doubt. Anybody, yeah. anybody that that you regret leaving off that list? Um, nobody I re- really regret. I don't think. Go, I mean, I, I got some people I could add. I'll go Dustin Schaefer yeah, with uh, Sunshine Shane Smith. He was with Shane Smith. He was. Yeah. I, I saw him with the Black Lilies, and he played a Pink Floyd song, and I was sitting two rows on the second row, and I'm like. Thank you. It was just beautiful, yeah. and he's he's a, he's a monster player. I, I like watching Brett Hendricks, and and yeah. not and the reason I like watching Brett, he is a phenomenal guitar player. But but I love Brett. He and, and he's not really more. He's he's kind of matured a little bit as times went. But the first the first little bit I ever seen Brett, he was still kind of this immature kid to me, and so. In doing that, he seemed, I don't know, a little awkward every now and then. He didn't seem comfortable yeah. in his skin. And so he'd step up. And he's the front man, too. And he's the front man of his band back in the day, the Brett Hendricks band. And he still played, too. And he'd step up. And you're thinking, great, what's this kid going to do now? And he'd just rip your face off yeah. of it. I, I like that. Yeah, we talked. We talked last time about people with drive and the want to just be professional. Mm-hmm. And Brett Brett fits that really well. Yeah, and he, he's 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 going to push push to be the best he can be all yeah. the time. And he's he's um, he's doing. Uh, I wish I knew the name of the probably shouldn't have brought it up now, but a uh, band up in uh, Montana or something like yeah. that. He's a guitar player. And it looks like they've got a pretty big following too. Yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, we're dude. We could talk for we could. six more hours. We could. This is uh, we turn the cameras off and just talk. Yeah. We, we did for a little while back yeah. there about all the stories we can't talk about on camera. It's crazy what happens when friends that don't get to see each other too often get yeah. to hang out. And- <laughs> Man, just well, let's. Uh, this, well, I guess that's about it. Let's get yeah. out of here then. So episode three in the books. Episode one was over Skype. Episode two was in my studio. Episode three was around in the table. Here, in you the know, table. it's kind of around the table. Our, I kind of like the round table. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to sort of figure this out, maybe pull it out and kind of get need just some shorter lens cameras. I, I kind of like this sort of idea. It definitely has that 
friends around, you know, catching up. Yeah. That. I mean, yeah. that's what that's, it is. That's, that's one cool. of the things we kind of, I think we was sort of wanted to be. We want, you know, cause you got the big comfy chair in your office, you yeah. know, and well, want it, that nice, easy vibe. And if we ever, if we have a guest in my house, we'll pull the table out in the living room and we'll have it. Yeah. And, and just yeah, a big, you know, I got, I got a rectangle table though. So yeah, it's kind of lame, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> No, so, I, 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 can't, I can't believe uh, you came down to Fort Worth. Yeah, it was, you, it was an absolute – I, I yeah. asked Bo yesterday. I'm like, hey, what are you doing tomorrow night? And here you are. And here it, we are. I couldn't be more thrilled that you're yeah, our first man, live so guest. Exciting. Man, I've I, been excited all day. I've been – I'm ready to get down here and do it. It means it means a lot to us. It absolutely uh, does, man. It, you know, I, I I do. I think you're an incredible artist, and I think you're just a great friend, and and you're somebody that that um I always always enjoy seeing your name yeah. pop up in my and, feed and, and just and seeing your, seeing your progression. And you're life. one of the poster kids of the Hello Texas yeah. business model of we really. You you deserve every oh, everything yes. that we're talking about. Yeah, there, there, I'm, I'm sure there's like guitar magazines and stuff. They they should be you know, finding you guys and, and doing you know all all the guys you know from the five, which actually actually turns out to be fifteen. But like the the and then I got some two for so there was like twenty two <laughs> twenty. Yeah, four, that's you had If y'all but only, there's a lot. If yeah. y'all only knew, I mean, I can rattle myself real fast. Like literally this past week, we had a show in Oklahoma and. Um, the day before we left, I've been rehearsing some music and we have this new puppy at our house and the puppy peed on the dog bed. And so I ran out to go, you know, try to stop it from peeing, knocked my guitar over and broke the high E string. I looked down. I'm like, I don't think I have any strings at the house. They're probably all in the guitar vault on the road. No big deal. I take a guitar with five strings on the road with me. I get to the sound check and I open the guitar vault and I was like, shit, I think I'm just straight up out of guitar strings. So I had no strings. So I'm having the sound check with the five string guitar and about 30 minutes before the show, me and the bass player AD ran over to the guitar store and had to go buy a pack of strings so I could play the show that night. And it's like the whole time I'm like, what are you doing right now? But yeah, so uh, no guitar magazine is going to be calling anytime soon. I, I'm unless I'm getting some award for being the first guy to play with five strings on no, accident. No, once once you yeah. hit the big time, you get people to go get your strings for you. Yeah, so. I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, you know, and it, here's what's funny is I think you get there and you find out that nobody they, getting they, your strings for you. They, they, they could probably do. They probably do a lot of the same stuff too. Oh, yeah. so. I don't know. Man. I was laughing at myself though, pretty good. That was a funny moment. Thank you so much. Yeah, again. thank you guys. Thank you. Heck yeah. So, Steve, Tim, I guess until next time. For Hello Texas, I'm Steve. I'm Tim. I'm Bo. So long, Texas. Bye, Texas. <laughs> Wasn't that the one that we know about the bananas?